Okay, so this is the first recording of the Tao Te Ching, also known as the Tao Te Ching. So the Tao can be understood, cannot be the primal or cosmic Tao. Just as an idea that can be expressed in words cannot be the infinite idea. And yet, this ineffable Tao was the source of all spirit and matter, and being expressed was the mother of all created things. Therefore, not to desire the things of sense is to know the freedom of spirituality, and to desire is to learn the limitation of matter. These two things, spirit and matter, so different in nature, have the same origin. This unity of origin is the mystery of mysteries, but it is the gateway to spirituality. Chapter 2 When everyone recognizes beauty to be only a masquerade, then it is simply ugliness. In the same way, goodness, if it is not sincere, is not goodness. So existence and non-existence are incompatible. The difficult and easy are mutually opposites, just as long at, just as long and short. The high and the low, the loud and the soft, the before and the behind, are all opposites of each reveals the other. Therefore, the wise man is not conspicuous in his affairs or given to much talking. Though troubles arise, he is not irritated. He produces, but does not own. He acts, but claims no merit. He builds, but does not dwell therein. And because he does not dwell therein, he never departs. Chapter 3. Neglecting to praise the worthy deters people from emulating them. Just as not prizing rare treasures deters a man from becoming a thief, or ignoring the things which awaken desire keeps the heart at rest. Therefore, the wise ruler does not suggest unnecessary things, but seeks to justify the minds of his people. He seeks to allay appetites, but strengthen bones. He never tries by keeping people in ignorance to keep them satisfied, and those who have knowledge he restrains from evil. If he himself practices restraint, then everything is in quietness. Chapter 4 The Tao appears to be emptiness, but it is never exhausted. Oh, it is profound. It appears to have preceded everything. It dulls its own sharpness. It ravels its own fetters. Softens its own brightness, identifies itself with its own dust. Oh, it is tranquil. It appears infinite. I do not know from what it proceeds. It even appears to be antecedent of the Lord. Chapter 5 Heaven and earth are not like humans. They are impartial. They regard all things as insignificant, as though, as though they were playthings made of straw. The wise man is also impartial. To him, all men are alike and unimportant. The space between heaven and earth is like a bellows. It is empty, but does not collapse. It moves, and more and more issues. A gossip is soon empty. It is doubtful if he can be impartial. Chapter 6 The spirit of the perennial spring is said to be immortal. She is called the Mysterious One. The Mysterious One is typical of the source of heaven and earth. It is continually and endlessly issuing and without effort. Chapter 7 Heaven is eternal. Earth is lasting. The reason why heaven and earth are eternal and lasting is because they do not live for themselves. That is the reason they will ever endure. Therefore, the wise man will keep his personality out of sight. And because of doing so, he will become notable. He subordinates his personality, and therefore it is preserved. Is it not because he is disinterested that his own interests are conserved? Chapter 8 True goodness is like water, in that it benefits everything and harms nothing. Like water, it ever seeks the lowest place, the place that all others avoid. It is closely kin to the Tao. For a dwelling, it chooses the quiet meadow, for a heart, the circling eddy. In generosity, it is kind. In speech, it is sincere. 
In authority, it is order. In affairs, it is ability. In movement, it is rhythm. Inasmuch as it always peaceable, it is never rebuked. Chapter 9. Continuing to fill a pail after it is full of water will be wasted. Continuing to grind an axe after it is sharp will soon wear it away. Who can protect a public hall crowded with gold and jewels? The pride of wealth and position brings about their own misfortune. To win true merit, to preserve just fame, the personality must be retiring. This is the healthy Tao. Chapter 10. By patience, the animal spirits can be disciplined. By self-control, one can unify the character. By close attention to the will, compelling gentleness, one can become like a little child. By purifying the subconscious desires, one may be without fault. In ruling his country, if the wise magistrate loves his people, he can avoid compulsion. In measuring out rewards, the wise magistrate will act like a mother bird. While sharply penetrating into every corner, he may appear to be unsuspecting. While quickening and feeding his people, he will be producing, but without pride of ownership. He will benefit, but without claim of reward. He will persuade, but not to compel by force. This is Te, the profoundest virtue. Chapter 11. Although the wheel has 30 spokes, its utility lies in the emptiness of the hub. The jar is made by kneading clay, but its usefulness consists in its capacity. A room is made by cutting out windows and doors through the walls, but the space the walls contain measures the room's value. In the same way, matter is necessary to form, but the value of reality lies in its immateriality, or thus a material body is necessary to existence. But the value of life is measured by its immaterial soul. Chapter 12. An excess of light binds the human eye. An excess of noise ruins the ear. An excess of condiments deadens the taste. The effect of too much horse racing and hunting is bad. And the lore of hidden treasure tempts one to do evil. Therefore the wise man attends to the inner significance of things and does not concern himself with outward appearances. Therefore he ignores matter and seeks the spirit. Chapter 13. Favor and disgrace are alike to be feared, just as too great care or anxiety are bad for the body. Why favor and disgrace alike to be feared? To be favored is humiliating. To obtain it is as much to be dreaded as to lose it. To lose favor is to be in disgrace, and of course is to be dreaded. Why are excessive care and great anxiety alike bad for one? The very reason I have anxiety is because I have a body. I have not body. Why would I be anxious? Therefore, if he who administers the empire esteems it as his own body, then he is worthy to be trusted by the empire. Chapter 14. It is unseen because it is colorless. It is unheard because it is soundless. When, a- when seeking to grasp it, it eludes one because it is incorporeal. Because of these qualities, it cannot be examined, and yet they form an essential unity. Superficially, it appears abstruse, but in its depths, it is not obscure. It has been nameless forever. It appears and then disappears. It is what is known as the form of formless, the image of the Im- imageless. It is called the transcendental, Its face, or destiny, cannot be seen in front, or its back, the origin, behind. But by holding fast to the Tao of the ancients, the wise man may understand the present, because he knows the origin of the past. This is the clue to the Tao. Chapter 15. In olden times, the ones who were considered worthy to be called masters were subtle, spiritual, profound, wise, Yet their thoughts could not be easily understood. Since they were hard to understand, I will try to make them clear. They were cautious like men, wading a river in winter. They were reluctant like men who feared their neighbors. They were reserved like guests in the presence of their host. 
They were elusive like ice at the point of melting. They were like seasoned wood. They were like a valley between high mountains. They were obscure like troubled waters. They were cautious because they were conscious of the deeper meanings of life and its possibilities. We can clarify troubled waters by slowly quieting them. We can bring unconscious to life by, slow, by slowly moving them. But who has the secret of the Tao does not desire for more. Being content, he is able to mature without the desire to be newly fashioned. Chapter 16. Seek to attain an open mind, the summit of vacuity. Seek composure, the essence of tranquility. All things are in process, rising and returning. Plants come to blossom, but only to return to the root. Returning to the root is like seeking tranquility. It is moving towards its destiny. To move toward destiny is like eternity. To know eternity is enlightenment. And not to recognize eternity brings disorder and evil. Knowing eternity makes one comprehensive comprehension, makes one broad-minded. Breadth of vision brings nobility. Nobility is like heaven. Heavenly is like Tao. Tao is the eternal. The decay of the body is not to be feared. Chapter 17. When great men rule, subjects know little of their existence. Rulers who are less great win the affection and the praise of their subjects. A common ruler is feared by his subjects and an unworthy ruler is despised. When a ruler lacks faith, he may seek in vain for its among its subjects. How carefully a wise ruler chooses his words. He performs deeds and immaculates merit. Under such a ruler, the people think they are ruling themselves. Chapter 18. When the great Tao is lost sight of, we still have the idea of benevolence and righteousness. Prudence and wisdom come to mind when we see great hypocrisy. When relatives are unfriendly, we still have the teachings of filial piety and paternal affection. When the state and the clan are in confusion and disorder, we still have the ideals of loyalty and faithfulness. Chapter 19. Abandon the show of saintless and relinquish excessive prudence. Then people will benefit a hundredfold. Abandon ostentatious benevolence and conspicuous righteousness. Then people will return to the primal virtues of filial piety and parental affection. Abandon cleverness and relinquish gains. Then thieves and robbers will disappear. Here are three fundamentals on which to depend, wherein culture is insufficient. Therefore, let men hold to that which is reliable, namely, Recognize simplicity, cherish purity, reduce one's possessions, diminish one's desires. Chapter 20. Avoid learning. If you would have no anxiety, the yes and the yeah differ very little, but the contrast between good and evil is very great. That which is not feared by the people is not worth fearing, but oh, the difference, the dissolution, the vastness, between ignorance and the limitless expression of the Tao. And we will stop there for today. Chapter 20 of the Tao Te Ching. Avoid learning if you would have no anxiety. The yes and the yeah differ very little, but the contrast between good and evil is very great. That which is not feared by the people is not worth fearing. But oh, the difference, the desolation, the vastness between ignorance and the limitless expression of the Tao. Chapter 21. All the innumerable forms of Te correspond to the norm of Tao. But the nature of the Tao's activity is infinitely abstract and elusive. Elusive and obscure, indeed, but at its heart are forms and types. Vague and elusive, indeed, but at its heart is all being unfathomable and obscure indeed, but at its heart is all spirit, and spirit is reality, and at its heart is truth. From the old expression, it's unceasing. It has been present at all beginnings. How do I know that its nature is thus? By this same Tao. Chapter 22. At the time, the deficient will be made perfect. The distorted will be straightened. The empty will be filled. 
the worn out will be renewed. Those having little will obtain, and those having much will overcome. Therefore, the wise man embracing unity as he does will become the world's model. Not pushing himself forward, he will become enlightened. Not asserting himself, he will become distinguished. Not boasting of himself, he will acquire merit. Not approving himself, he will endure. For as much as he will not quarrel, the world will not quarrel with him. Is the old saying, the crooked shall be made straight, a false saying? Indeed, no. They will be perfected and return rejoicing. Chapter 23. Taciturnity is natural to man. A whirlwind never outlasts the morning, nor a violent rain the day. What is the cause? It is it heaven and earth? Is even heaven and earth are not consistent, much less can be. Therefore, he who pursues his affairs in the spirit of the Tao will become Tao-like. He who pursues his affairs of Tay will become Tay-like. He who pursues his affairs with loss identifies himself with loss. He who identifies himself with Tao, Tao rejoices to guide. He who identifies himself with Tay, Tay rejoices to reward. And he who identifies himself with loss, loss rejoices to ruin. If his faith fail, he will receive no reward of faith. Chapter 24 It is not natural to stand on tiptoe, or being astride, one does not walk. One who displays himself is not bright, or one who asserts himself cannot shine. A self-approving man has no merit, nor does one who praises himself grow. The relation of these things, self-display, self-assertion, self-approval, to Tao, is the same as awful is to food. They are excrescences from the system. They are detestable. Tao does not dwell in them. Chapter 25. There is being that is all-inclusive, and that existed before heaven and earth. Calm, indeed, the incorporeal. It is alone and changeless. Everywhere it functions unhindered. It thereby becomes the world's mother. I do not know its nature. If I try to characterize it, I will call it the Tao. If forced to give it a name, I will call it the Great. The Great is evasive. The evasive is the distant. The distant is ever coming near. Tao is great. So is heaven great, and so is earth, and so also is the representative of heaven and earth. Man is derived from nature. Nature is derived from heaven. Heaven is derived from Tao. Tao is self-derived. Chapter 26. The heavy is the root of the light. The quiet is the master of motion. Therefore, the wise man in all the experience of the day will not depart from dignity, though he be surrounded with sights that are magnificent. He will remain calm and unconcerned. How does it come to pass that the emperor, master of 10,000 chariots, has lost the mastery of the empire? Because being flippant himself, he has lost the respect of his subjects. Being passionate himself, he has lost the control of the empire. Chapter 27. Good walkers leave no tracks. Good speakers make no errors. Good counters need no abacus. Good wardens have no food for bolts and locks, for no one can get by them. Good binders can dispense with the rope and cord, yet no, yet none can unloose their hold. Therefore the wise man trusting in goodness always saves men, for there is no outcast to him. Trusting in goodness, he saves all things, for there is nothing valueless to him. This is recognizing concealed values. Therefore, the good man is the instructor of the evil man, and the evil man is the good man's wealth. He who does not esteem his instructors or value his wealth, though he be otherwise intelligent, becomes confused. Herein lies the significance of spirituality. Chapter 28. He who knows his manhood and understands his womanhood becomes useful like the valleys of earth, which bring water. Being like the valleys of earth, eternal vitality, the te, will not depart from him. He will come again to the nature of the little child. He who knows his innocence and recognizes his sin becomes the world's model. Being a world's model, infinite te will not fail. He will return to the absolute. 
He who knows the glory of his nature and recognizes also his limitations become useful like the world's valleys. Being like the world's valleys, eternal te will not fail him. He will revert to simplicity. Radiating simplicity, he will make of men vessels of uselessness, of usefulness. The wise man then will employ them as officials and chiefs. A great administration of such will harm no one. Chapter 29. One who desires to take and remake the empire will fail. The empire is a divine thing that cannot be remade. He who attempts it will only mar it. He who seeks to grasp it will lose it. People differ. Some lead, others follow. Some are ardent, others are formal. Some are strong, others are weak. Some succeed, others will fail. Therefore, the wise man practices moderation. He abandons pleasure, extravagance, and indulgence. Chapter 30. When the magistrate follows Tao, he has no need to resort to force of arms to strengthen the empire, because his business methods alone will show good returns. Briars and thorns grow rank, where an army camps. Bad harvests are the sequence of a great war. The good ruler will be resolute and then stop. He dare not take by force. One should be resolute, but not boastful. Resolute, but not haughty. Resolute, but not arrogant. Resolute, but yielding, when it can be avoided. Resolute, but he must not resort to violence. By a resort to force, things flourish for a time, but then decay. This is not like the Tao, and that which is not Tao-like will soon cease. The Tao Te Ching, Chapter 31. Even successful arms among all implements are unblessed. All men come to detest them. Therefore, the one who follows the Tao does not rely on them. Arms are of all tools unblessed. They are not the implements of a wise man. Only as a last resort does he use them. Peace and quietude are esteemed by the wise man. And even when victorious, he does not rejoice because rejoicing over a victory is the same as rejoicing over the killing of men. If he rejoices over killing men, do you think he will ever really master the empire? In propitious affairs, the place of honor is the left, but in unpropitious affairs, we honor the right. The strong man while at home esteems the left as the place of honor, but when armed for war, it is though he esteems the right hand, the place of less honor. Thus a funeral ceremony is so arranged. The place of a subordinate army officer is also on the left, and the place of his superior officer is on the right. The killing of men fills multitudes with sorrow. We lame it with tears because of it, and rightly honor the victor as if he was attending a funeral ceremony. Chapter 32. Tao is an eternal aspect, is unnameable. Its simplicity appears insignificant, but the whole world cannot control it. If princes and kings employ its very one of themselves will pay willing homage. Heaven and earth by it are harmoniously combined and drop sweet dew. People will have no need of rulers because of themselves they will be righteous. As soon as Tao expresses itself in orderly creation, then it becomes comprehensible. When one recognizes the presence of the Tao, he understands where to stop. Knowing where to stop, he is free from danger. To illustrate the nature of Tao's place in its universe, Tao is like the brooks and streams in their relation to the great rivers and ocean. Chapter 33. He who knows others is intelligent. He who understands himself is enlightened. He who is able to conquer others has force. But he who is able to control himself is mighty. He who appreciates contentment is wealthy. He who dares to act has nerve. If he can maintain his position, he will endure. But he who is dying does not perish, is immortal. Chapter 34. Great Tao is all-pervading. It can be both on the right hand and on the left. Everything relies upon it for their existence, and it does not fail them. It acquires merit, but covets not the title. It lovingly nourishes everything, but does not claim the rights of ownership. It has no desires. It can be classed with the small. Everything returns to it, yet it does not claim the right of ownership. It can be classed with the great. Therefore, the wise man to the end will not pose as a great man.
and by doing so will express its true greatness. Chapter 35. The world will go to him who grasps the great principle. They will seek not to be injured. They will find contentment, peace, and rest. Music and dainties attract the passing people, while Tao's reality seen is insipid. Indeed, it has no taste. When looked at, there is not enough seen to be prized. When listened for it, it can be scarcely heard. But the use of it is inexhaustible. Chapter 36. That which has a tendency to contract itself must first have been extended. That which has a tendency to weaken itself must first have been strong. That which shows a tendency to destroy itself must first have been raised up. That which shows a ten- tendency to scatter must first have been gathered. This is the explanation of a seeming contradiction. The tender and yielding conquer the rigid and strong i.e. spirit is stronger than matter, persuasion than force. The fish would be foolish to escape from its natural environment. There is no gain to a nation to compel by a show of force. Chapter 37. Tao is appropriately, Tao is apparently inactive, Wu Wei. And yet nothing remains undone. If princes and kings desire to keep, Everything in order, they must first reform themselves. If princes and kings would follow the example of Tao, then all things will reform themselves. If they still desire to change, I would pacify them by simplicity of the ineffable Tao. This simplicity will end desire, and if desire is absent, there is quietness. All people will of themselves be satisfied. Chapter 38. Essential te makes no show of virtue, and therefore it is really virtuous. Inferior virtue never loses sight of itself, and therefore it is no longer virtue. Essential virtue is ca- characterized by lack of self-assertion, wu wei, and therefore is unpretentious. Inferior virtue is acting a part of thereby is only presence. Superior benevolence in a way is acting, but does not thereby become pretentious. Excessive righteousness is acting and does not thereby become pretentious. Excessive proprietary is acting, but where no one responds to it, it stretches his arms and enforces obedience. Therefore, when one loses Tao, there is still Te, and one may lose Te and benevolence remains. One may forsake benevolence and still hold to righteousness. One may lose righteousness and propriety remains. Propriety alone reduces loyalty and good faith to a shadow, and it is the beginning of disorder. Tradition is the mere flower of the Tao, and had its grown had its origin in ignorance. Therefore, the great man of affairs conforms to the spirit and not external appearance. He goes on a fruitage and does not rest in the show of blossom. He avoids mere propriety and practices true benevolence. Chapter 39 It has been said of old, only those who attain unity attain selfhood. Heaven attained unity, and thereby is space. Earth attained unity, thereby it is solid. Spirit attained unity, thereby it became mind. Valleys attained unity, unity, therefore rivers flowed down them. All things have unity, and thereby have life. Princes and kings, as they attain unity, become standards of conduct for the nation, and the highest unity is that which produces unity. If heaven were not space, it might crack. If earth earth were not solid, it might bend. If spirits were not unified into mind, they might vanish. If valleys were not adopted to rivers, they would be parched. Everything, if it were not for life, would burn up. Even princes and kings, if they overestimate themselves and cease to be standards, will presumably fail. Therefore, nobles find their roots among the commoners. The high is always founded upon the low. The reason why princes and kings speak of themselves as orphans, inferiors, and unworthy is because they recognize that their roots run down to the common life. Is it not so? If a carriage goes into peace, it is no longer a carriage. Its unity is gone. A true selfhood does not desire to be overvalued as a gem, nor to be undervalued as a mere stone. 
and this is chapter 40 of the Tao Te Ching. Retirement is characteristic of Tao, just as weakness appears to be a characteristic of its activity. Heaven and earth and everything are produced from existence, but existence comes from non-existence. Chapter 41. The superior scholar, when he considers Tao, earnestly practices it. An average scholar listening to Tao sometimes follows it and sometimes loses it. An inferior scholar listening to Tao ridiculous it, ridicules it. Were it not thus ridiculed, it could not be regarded as Tao. Therefore, the writer says, those who are most illum- illumined by Tao are the most obscure. Those advanced in Tao are most retiring. Those best guided by Tao are the least prepo- prepossessing. The high in virtue, Te, resemble a lowly valley. The widest are most likely to be put to shame. The broadest in virtue resemble inefficient. The most firmly established in virtue resemble the remiss. The simplest chastity resembles the fickle. The greatest square has no corner. The largest vessel is never filled. The greatest sound is void of speech. The greatest form has no shape. Tao is obscure and without name, and yet it is precisely the Tao that alone can give and complete. Chapter 42. Tao produces unity. Unity produces duality. Duality produces trinity. Trinity produces all things. All things bear the negative principle, yin, and embrace the positive principle, yang. Immaterial vitality, the third principle, qi, makes them harmonious. Those things which are detested by the common people, namely to be called orphans, inferiors, and unworthiness, are the very things in kings and lords to take for titles. There are some things which it is a gain to lose and a loss to gain. I am teaching the same things which are taught by others, but the strong and aggressive. Ones do not obtain a natural death, i.e. self-confident. Teachers do not succeed. I alone expound the basis of the doctrine of the Tao. Chapter 43. The most tender things of creation race over the hardest. A non-material existence enters into the most impenetrable. I therefore recognize an advantage in a doctrine of not doing, wu-wei, and not speaking. But there are few in the world who obtain the advantage of non-assertion, wu-wei, and silence. Chapter 44. Which is near a name or a person? Which is more, personality or treasure? Is it more painful to gain or to suffer loss? Extreme indulgence certainly creates greatly waste. Much hoarding certainly invites severe loss. A contented person is not despised. One who knows when to stop is not endangered. He will be able, therefore, to continue. Chapter 45. Extreme perfection seems imperfect. Its function is not exhausted. Extreme fullness appears empty. Its function is not exercised. Extreme straightness appears crooked. Great skill, clumsy. Great eloquence, stammering. Motion conquers cold. Quietude conquers heat. Not greatness, but purity and clearness are the world's standard. Chapter 46. When the world yields to Tao, race horses will be used to haul manure. manure. When the world ignores, Tao war horses are pastured on the public common. All right, and I'm going to break character for a second because this is probably my favorite quote in the entire book. (laughs) There is no sin greater than desire. There is no misfortune greater than discontent. There is no calamity greater than acquisitiveness. Therefore, to know extreme contentment is simply to be content. Chapter 47. Not going out of the door, I have knowledge of the world. Not peeping through the window, I perceive heaven's towel. The more one wanders to, to a distance, the less he knows. Therefore, the wise man does not wander about, but he understands. He does not see things, but he defines them. He does not labor, yet he completes. 
chapter 48. He who attends daily to learning increases in learning. He who practices Tao daily diminishes it. Again and again, he humbles himself. Thus, he attains to non-doing, Wu Wei. He practices non-doing, and yet there is nothing left undone. To command the empire, one must not employ craft. If one uses craft, he is not fit to command the empire. Chapter 49. The wise man has no fixed heart. In the hearts of the people, he finds his own. The good he treats, the goodness, the not good, he also treats with goodness. For Tay is goodness. The faithful ones he treats with good faith. The unfaithful he also treats with good faith. For Tay is good faith. The wise man lives in the world, but he lives cautiously, dealing with the world cautiously. He universalizes his heart. The people give him their eyes and ears, but he treats them as children. Chapter 50 of the Tao Te Ching. Life is a going forth. Death is a returning home. Of ten, three are seeking life. Three are seeking death and three are dying. What is the reason? Because they only live in life's experience. Only one is immortal. I hear it said that the sage when he travels is never attacked by rhinoceros or tiger. And when coming along, soldiers does not fear their weapons. The rhinoceros would find no peace to horn him, nor the tiger a place for his claws, nor could soldiers wound him. What is the reason? Because he is invulnerable. 51. Tao gives life to all creatures. Te feeds them. Materiality shapes them. Energy completes them. Therefore, among all things, there is none that does not honor Tao and esteem Te. Honor for Tao and esteem for Te is never compelled. It is always spontaneous. Therefore, Tao gives life to them, but Te nurses them, raises them, nurtures, completes, matures, rears, protects them. Tao gives life to them, but makes no claim of ownership. Tay forms them, but makes no claim upon them. Raises them, but does not rule them. This is profound vitality. Tay. 52. When creation began, Tao became the world's mother. When one knows one's mother, he will turn, he will in turn know that he is her son. When he recognizes his sonship, he will turn, in turn, keep to his mother, and to the end of life will be free from danger. He who closes his mouth and shuts his sense gates will be free from trouble to the end of life. He who opens his mouth and meddles with affairs cannot be free from trouble even to the end of life. To recognize one's significance, to recognize one's insignificance is called enlightenment. To keep one's sympathy is called strength. He who uses Tao's light returns to Tao's enlightenment and does not surrender his person to perdition. This is called practicing the eternal. 53. Even if one has but a little knowledge, he can walk in the ways of the great Tao. It is only self-assertion that one needed far. The great Tao, the way, is very plain, but people prefer the bypaths. When the palace is very splendid, the fields are likely to be very weedy, and the granaries are empty. To wear ornaments and gay colors, to carry sharp swords, to be excessive in eating and drinking, to have wealth and treasure in abundance is to know the pride of robbers. This is contrary to Tao. One thing that is well planted is not easily uprooted. The thing that is well guarded is not easily taken away. If one has sons and grandsons, the offering of ancestral worship will not soon cease. He who practices Tao in his person shows that his Te is real. The family that practices it shows that their life, their Te is abounding. The township that practices it shows that their Te is enduring. The state that practices it shows that their Te is prolific. The empire that practices it reveals that Te is universal. Thereby, one person becomes a test of other persons, one family, 
of other families, one town of other towns, one country of other countries, and one empire of all empires. How do I know that this is a test is universal by this same Tao? 55. The essence of Tay is comparable to the state of a young boy. Poisonous insects will not sting him. Wild beasts will not seize him. Birds of prey will not attack him. The bones are weak. The muscles are tender. It is true, but his grasp is firm. He does not yet know the relation of the sexes, but he has perfect organs. Nevertheless, his spirit is viral. Indeed, he can sob and cry all day without becoming hoarse. His harmony as a child is perfect indeed. To recognize this harmony for growth, it is to know eternal. To recognize the eternal is to know enlightenment. To increase life, to cause things to grow, is to know blessedness. To be conscious of inner fecundity is strength. Things fully grown are about to decay. They are the opposite of Tao. The opposite of Tao soon ceases. 56. The one who knows does not speak. The one who speaks does not know. The wise man shuts his mouth and closes his gates. He softens his sharpness, unravels his tangles, dims his brilliancy, and reckons himself with the mysterious. He is inaccessible to favor or hate. He cannot be reached by profit or injury. He cannot be honored or humiliated. Thereby, he is honored by all. 57. The empire is administered with righteousness. The army is directed by craft. The people are captivated by non-diplomacy. How do I know that it is so? By this same Tao. Among people, the more restrictions and prohibitions there are, the poorer they become. The more people have weapons, the more the state is in confusion. The more people are artful and cunning, the more abnormal things occur. The more laws and orders are issued, the more thieves and robbers abound. Therefore, the wise man says, if a ruler practices Wu Wei, the people will reform themselves. If I love quietude, the people will of themselves become righteous. If I avoid profit making, the people will of themselves become prosperous. If I limit my desires, the people will of themselves become simple. 58. When an administration is unstentatious, the people are simple. When an administration is inquisitive, the people are needy. Misery, alas, supports happiness. Happiness, alas, conceals misery. Who knows its limits? It never ceases. The normal becomes the abnormal. The good in turn becomes unlucky. The people's confusion is felt daily for a long time. Therefore, the wise man is square, yet does not injure. He is angular, but does not annoy. He is upright, but is not cross. He is bright, but not glaring. 59. In governing the people and in worshiping heaven, nothing surpasses moderation. To value moderation, one must form the habit early. Its early acquisition will result, result in storing and accumulating vitality. By storing and accumulating vitality, nothing is impossible. If nothing is impossible, then one is ignorant of his limits. If one does not know his limitations, one may possess the state. He who possesses moderation is thereby lasting and enduring. It is like having deep roots and a strong stem. This is of long life and enduring insight of the Tao. One should govern a great state as one fries small fish, i.e. do not scale or clean them. The Tao of many successfully rule the empire. Ghosts will not frighten. Gods will not harm. Neither will wise men misled, mislead the people. Since nothing frightens or harms the people, Te will abide. 61. A great state that is useful is like a bond of unity within the empire. It is the empire's wife. The female controls the male by her quietude and submission. Thus, a great state, it's by service to smaller states, wins their allegiance. A small state by submission to a great state wins an influence over them. Thus, some stoop to conquer and others stoop to conquer. Great states have no higher purpose than to federate states and feed the people. Small states can have no higher purpose 
than to enter the Federation and serve the people. Both alike, each in his own way, gain their end. But to do so, the greater must practice humility. 62. The Tao is the asylum of all things, the good man's treasure, the bad man's last resort. With beautiful words, one may sell goods, but in winning people, one can accomplish more by kindness. Why should a man be thrown away for his evil? To conserve him was the empire appointed and the three ministers. Better than being in the presence of the empire, emperor, and riding with four horses, is sitting and explaining this Tao. The reason the ancients esteemed Tao was because if sought, it was obtained, and because by it, he that hath sin could be saved. Is it not so? Therefore, the world honors Tao. 63. One should avoid assertion, Wu Wei, and practice inaction. One should learn to find taste in the tasteless, to enlarge the small things and multiply the few. He should respond to hatred with kindness. He should resolve a difficulty while it is easy and manage such great thing while it is small. Surely all the world's difficulties arose from slight causes and all the world's great affairs had small beginnings. Therefore the wise man avoids to the end of participation in great affairs and by doing so establishes his greatness. Rash promises are lacking in faith and many things that appear easy are full of difficulties. Therefore, the wise man considers everything difficult, and so to the end, he has no difficulties. 64. That which is at rest is easily restrained. That which has not yet appeared is easily prevented. The weak is easily broken. The scanty is easily scattered. Consider a difficulty before it arises and administer affairs before they become disorganized. A tree that it takes both arms to encircle grew from a tiny rootlet. A pagoda of nine stories was erected by placing small bricks. A journey of 3,000 miles begins with one step, and if one tries to improve a thing, he mars it. If he seizes it, he loses it. The wise man, therefore not attempting to form things, does not mar them, and not grasping after things, he does not lose them. The people in their rush for business are ever approaching success, but continually failing. One must be careful to the end as the, the beginning if he is to succeed. Therefore, the wise man desires to be free from desire. He does not value the things that are difficult of attainment. He learns to be unlearned. He returns to that which all others ignore. In that spirit, he helps all things toward their natural development, but dares not interfere. 65. In the olden days, those who not obeyed the spirit of Tao did not enlighten the people, but kept them simple-hearted. The reason people are difficult to govern is because of their smartness. Likewise, to govern a people with guile is a curse, and to govern them with simplicity is a blessing. He who remembers these two things is a model ruler. Always to follow this standard and rule is Tay, the profound. Profound Tay is deep indeed and far reaching, the very opposite of common things. But by it, one obtains obedient subjects. 66. The reason rivers and seas are called the kings of the valley is because they keep below them. Therefore, the wise man desiring to be above his people must in his demeanor keep below them. Wishing to benefit his people, he must ever keep himself out of sight. The wise man dwells above, yet the people do not feel the burden. He is the leader, and the people suffer no harm. Therefore, the world rejoices to exalt him and never wearies of him. Because he will not quarrel with anyone, no one can quarrel with him. 67. All the world calls Tao great, yet it is by nature immaterial. It is because a thing is seemingly unreal that it is great. If a man affects to be great, how long can he conceal his mediocrity? Tao has three treasures which he guards himself and cherishes. The first is called compassion. The second is called economy. The third is called humility. 
A man that is compassionate can be truly brave. A man is economical, he can be generous. If he is humble, he can be his servant. If one discards compassion and is still brave, abandons economy and is still generous, forsakes humility and still seeks to be serviceable, his days are numbered. On the contrary, if one is truly compassionate, in battle he will be a conqueror, and in defense he will be secure. When heaven helps people, it is because of compassion that she does so. 68. One who excels as a soldier is the one who is not warlike. He who fights the best fight is not wrathful. He who best conquers an enemy is not quarrelsome. He who best employs people is obedient to himself. This is the virtue of not quarreling. This is the secret of bringing out other men's abilities. This is the complying with heaven. Since of old, it is considered the greatest virtue. Day. 69. A military expert has said, I do not dare put myself forward as a host, but always act as a guest. I hesitate to advance an inch, but am willing to withdraw a foot. This is advancing by not advancing. It is winning without arms. It is charging without hostility. It is seizing without weapons. There is no mistake greater than making light of an enemy. By making light of an enemy, we lose our treasure. Therefore, when well-matched armies come to conflict, the one who is conscious of his weakness conquers. 70. My words are very easy to understand and very easy to put into practice. Yet in all the world, no one appears to understand them or to practice them. Words have an ancestor, a preceding idea. Deeds have a master, a preceding purpose. And just as these are often not understood, so I am not understood. They who understand me are very few, and on that account I am worthy of honor. The wise man wears wool rather than silk, and keeps his gems out of sight. 71. To recognize one's ignorance of unknowable things is mental health, and to be ignorant of knowable things is sickness. Only by grieving over ignorance of knowable things are we in mental health. The wise man is wise because he understands his ignorance and is grieved over it. 72. When people are too ignorant to fear the fearsome thing, then it will surely come. Do not make the place where they dwell confining, the life they live wearisome. If they are left alone, they will not become restless. Therefore the wise man, while not understanding himself, regards himself. While cherishing, he does not overvalue himself. Therefore he discards flattery and prefers regard. 73. Courage carried to daring leads to death. Courage restrained by caution leads to life. These two things, courage and caution, are sometimes beneficial and sometimes harmful. Some things are rejected by heaven. Who can tell the reason? Therefore, the wise man deems all acting difficult. The Tao of heaven does not quarrel, yet it conquers. It speaks, yet, not, yet its purpose response is good. It issues no summons, but things come to it naturally because its devices are good. Heaven's net is vast indeed. Its meshes are wide, but it loses nothing. 74. If the people do not fear death, how can one frighten them with death? If we teach people to fear death, then when one rebels, he can be seized and executed. After that, who will dare to rebel? Rebel. There is always an officer to execute a murderer, but if one takes the place of the executioner, it is like taking the place of a skilled carpenter at his hewing. If one takes the place of a skilled carpenter, he is liable to cut himself. Therefore, do not interfere with the towel. 75. Starvation of a people comes when an official appropriates to himself too much of the taxes. The reason that people are difficult to govern is because the officials are too meddlesome. The people make light of death because they are so absorbed in life's interests. The one who is not absorbed in life is more moral than he who esteems life. When a man is living, he is tender and fragile. When he dies, he is hard and stiff. It is the shame with everything. The grass and trees in life are tender and delicate. But when they die, they become rigid and dry. Therefore, those who are hard and stiff belong to death's domain. 
while the tender and weak belong to the realm of life. Therefore, soldiers are most invincible when they will not conquer. When a tree is grown to its greatest strength, it is doomed. The strong in the great way below, the tender and the weak rise above. 77. Tau of heaven resembles the stretching of a bow. The mighty it humbles, the lowly it exalts. They who have abundance it diminishes and gives to them who have needed. The Tao is of heaven, it depletes those who abound and completes those who lack. The human way is not so. Men take from those who lack to give to those who already abound. Where is the man who by his abundance can best serve the world? The wise man makes but claims not. He accomplishes merit, yet is not attached to it. Neither does he display his excellence. Is it not so? 78. In the world, nothing is more fragile than water, and yet of all the agencies that attack hard substances, nothing can surpass it. Of all things, there is nothing that can take the place of Tao. By it, the weak are conquerors of the strong. The pliable are conquerors of the rigid. In the world, everyone knows this, but none practice it. Therefore, wise man declares, He who is guilty of the country's sin may be the priest at the altar. He who is to blame for the country's misfortunes is often the empire's sovereign. True words are often paradoxical. 79. When reconciling great hatred, there will some remain. How can it be made good? Therefore, the wise man accepts the debit aside of the account and does not have to enforce payment from others. They who have virtue, te, keep their obligations. They who have no virtue insist on their rights. Tao of the heaven has no favorites, but always helps the good man. 80. In a small country, with few people, let their officers over tens and hundreds, but not to exercise power. Let the people be not afraid of death, nor desire to move to a distance. Then there be ships and carriages. They will have no occasion to use them. Though there be armor and weapons, there will be no occasion for donning them. The people can return to knotted cords for their records. They can delight in their food, be proud of their clothes, be content with their dwellings, rejoice in their customs. Other states may be close neighbors. Their cocks and dogs may be mutually heard. People will come of old age and die, but will have no desire to go home. 81. Faithful words are often not pleasant. Pleasant words are often not faithful. Good men do not dispute. The ones who dispute are not good. The learned men are often not the wise men, nor the wise men the learned. The wise man does not honor, does not hoard, but ever working for others. He will the more exceedingly acquire. Having given others freely, he himself will have plenty. Tao of heaven benefits but does not injure. The wise man's Tao leads him to act but not quarrel. The end.